I am Pam Fox at pamfox.org and in today's video I'm going to be going to um, the hiatal hernia support group for Q&A and today's actually a comment from Cindy Rohr and she says for a year I had heartburn really bad then finding a surgeon took six months for some reason they don't like doing the surgery but after seeing two surgeons finally one said that I needed it I threw up every time I ate my dinner so the reason I, I wanted to comment on this is because, um, first of all, I don't believe that um, surgery should never be an option. I believe there's a time and a place for surgery. And each individual has to really weigh out um, the risks and decide for themselves whether or not they want to have a hiatal hernia a surgical repair. Um, with that said, um, yes, surgeries, like any surgery, obviously there are risks involved. And unfortunately with hiatal hernia surgical repairs, oftentimes um, they don't work or they, they become re-herniated in time or they create a lot of additional problems. The surgery itself can, cre can create additional problems. And I do not say that um, to scare anyone away from having surgery. Unfortunately, sometimes it is the only option and I'm going to talk I'm going to talk about um, some of the reasons why that can be um, but Cindy says that she had a difficult time finding someone that would agree to do the surgery and again that's because um, you know surgeons don't like to do operations that have you know that oftentimes you know don't work or that they you know if the, it's just going to have to be redone down the road or you know you're going to put yourself at higher risk from that surgery then why would they want to do that surgery um, so it's understandable why it's hard to find a surgeon that will do um, a hiatal hernia rip surgical repair unless it's really needed um, so e examples of um, cases where um, a surgical repair would be um, you know a wise option obviously you know, if you've got a strangulated hernia, that's where you've got, you know, your stomach is up into the diaphragm. Really, I consider any hernia a strangulated hernia because you've got your, you've got it, you've got the, um, the diaphragm essentially wrapped around your stomach. The stomach shouldn't have anything squeezing it and wrapping around it. Um, but in the case of hiatal hernia, it does. Um, but when we talk about um, actual strangulated hiatal hernias. It's when the stomach is actually in a position where it is being so strangled that nothing can come or go um, through, that, through that hiatus and the tissues can begin to die off and it's a, it's a life or death situation. So in that case, um, obviously you're not gonna put off a surgical repair if it's a life or death situation. But also um, for folks who have a very uh, large hiatus where a large portion of their stomach is up into the chest cavity, maybe three quarters or more of the stomach is up into the chest cavity. This would be another time where you, know, you may wanna consider a, a surgical repair. If you've got three quarters of your stomach up into your chest cavity, then not only do you have an obstruction in your diaphragm, pressure on your stomach, pressure on your vagus nerve, you've also got all of that stomach up causing further crowding within the chest cavity. So now you've got pressure on your heart and pressure on your lungs and so you can have a variety of um, symptoms that could be causing you pain and discomfort but could also put you at risk. So, um, so that would be again a, a very large hiatus or a large hiatal hernia um, reason to look to the surgical repair. Uh, so Cindy mentions that she throws up, she threw up every time she ate her dinner. And that's the other thing I wanted to um, just talk about for a moment because this is actually a pretty um, standard or typical symptom for people with hiatal hernia. Um, and so just foundationally going back to what a hiatal hernia is, it's the stomach pushing through the diaphragm and that can put pressure on that valve known as the lower esophageal sphincter and so its job is to keep the contents in the stomach. So its job is to prevent you from vomiting your dinner. So if you're throwing up your dinner every night, um, again with a hiatal hernia, that pressure on that lower esophageal sphincter, as you every breath you take, your diaphragm is going up and down and it can put um, 
it can cause um, air to get trapped in this little portion of the stomach up in your chest cavity and um, that pressure is going to release in the form of a burp repetitively for many people. Many people have what I call chronic belching where they just burp all the time, all the time, all the time. And again, it's because it's with, with every breath as your diaphragm goes up and down, it can get air trapped in that little portion of the stomach up in the chest cavity where there's um, uh, anatomical pressure being put on that. And so it's got to release in the form of a belch. Um, and so then for some people it's just the burping, for others there's a little bit of regurgitation, for some it's a little bit of acid coming up and creating heartburn, and for others they can have violent vomiting of an entire meal. Okay, and so the difference between all of these though, however, um, you know, if you're just having the birching, the, the belching, <laughs> birching, <laughs> or if you're just having, you know, some heartburn, or if you're having a little bit of regurgitation, that's one thing. But if you are violent, violently vomiting an entire meal every single night, then Cindy, I don't know you, I don't know what your diet is, I don't know the size or the age of your hiatal hernia, but to anyone that's listening, if you have... Uh, daily vomiting of your dinner, you have to consider that your body is saying enough is enough with what you are putting into it. Okay, so first of all, we have to remember that the body is very wise and it, it takes life-saving measures every single day, hundreds, thousands of life-saving measure, measures every single day to keep you thriving and surviving, things that we don't even know about or think about. Um, when we vomit, that's the body's way of saying, you have put something inside of the body that we can't, the body just can't deal with it. It can't deal with it. If it, you know, maybe blood alcohol poisoning or food poisoning, or you get a bug, you know, you get a virus, you're sick and you vomit. It's because the body needs to expel that toxin. It can't, it can't deal with this overload of toxin. And so if you're vomiting up your dinner and you have a hiatal hernia, you're combining an overload of toxins, in many cases, with a weak and irritated lower esophageal sphincter. So not only do you have a weak and irritated lower esophageal sphincter that's not able to clamp down tight and keep those contents in, but now you've got the body saying, we have come to a point where enough is enough and we have to get rid of this. So let's imagine you eat a really unhealthy breakfast Okay, and the body, you know, does what it needs to do to take care of that unhealthy breakfast. It um, filters through the toxins and it, it does its job. And then it feels a little bit better by lunch and then you eat an unhealthy lunch, repeat that cycle, and then you eat an unhealthy dinner and it says enough is enough. We just need to, we need to get this toxicity out of the body and it will, it will vomit out that meal. Um, so if you're eating, you know, deep fried foods, you know, meat, dairy, and eggs can be a culprit if you've gotten to the point where your digestive system is inflamed. Those foods are highly acidic and they're going to continue to injure those tissues and inflame those tissues. If you're eating a lot of processed foods, any junk foods, highly processed foods, fast food, sodas, alcohol can be a culprit, coffee can even be a culprit. Although, you know, while there are healthy components to coffee, all of these foods are highly acidic, and when, when we eat these foods, um, I would even add medications to the list. These foods go into the digestive tract, and they're, they can be highly irritating to the tissues. And so the tissues are always in a state of inflammation, okay? And so if those tissues are always in a state of inflammation, and now you continue to enter in you know, these junk foods, the, again, the body is going to come to a point, and we each, have a, you know, each of us has a different level of resiliency of what we can tolerate you know it might be a 10 year old child that's vomiting up their meals every dinner or it might be a 60 year old man or anyone in between we each have a different level of resiliency where the body says enough is enough i can't take this the way you are feeding this body i can't take the way you are feeding me can't take it anymore we've just got to eject this food okay so um, to wrap up, I would say um, Cindy or anyone else that's considering a hiatal hernia, surgical repair, um, there, there, there may be an alternative therapy for you. And that's what I teach. I teach reversing hiatal hernia naturally, holistically, through one, changing your diet, and two, learning how to master the techniques to maneuver your stomach and get it unherniated. Because if you can unherniate your stomach, 
you will alleviate a lot of the symptoms that you're experiencing because you won't be putting all the pressure in the areas that you're putting the pressure on due to the hiatal hernia. And then three is um, learning how to strengthen your hiatus, the hole in your diaphragm, tightening it up so that that stomach can't re-herniate. Okay, and these would be important exercises to learn even after a surgical repair, so you don't have that re-herniation. Um, and so for someone with a very large hiatal hernia, a very long-term hiatal hernia, maybe you've had one your entire life, maybe surgery is the best option, but I would encourage you, if you are the type of person that thinks you can have a mindset shift where you say, I want to try a natural method, I want to give this a go, I want to give it a concerted, consistent effort, maybe for 30 days and just see how I feel, just see how I feel. I would gamble that, Cindy, if you were to go on a whole foods, plant-based diet for 30 days, you would begin to experience a decrease in inflammation and an increase in healing within your digestive tract and fewer and fewer symptoms. And if you would take the time to learn how to master um, moving your stomach down and out of that herniated position and strengthen your hiatus through some very simple um, and easy breathing exercises, um, that you may be able to reverse your hiatal hernia naturally, okay? So um, if you uh, like this content and you want to hear more about how to reverse hiatal hernia naturally, you can follow uh, me here on Facebook, like this page. You can also check out more at my website, pamfox.org, where I do sell a course where all of the information on how I reversed my hiatal hernia naturally is there in an online course for $67. Thank you for watching.